Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to Simon Kilag's YouTube channel. I'm sitting here with Mr. Paul Mason. It's Paul Mason. Watch this interview, it's about Paul Mason and his journey in PNG. One of the successful businessmen in Simbu in the late 70s to 80s. Um, he's sitting with me now to give us an insight of how it was uh, when he was a younger man. Please watch this video and hope you like this uh, video. Thanks, Stephen. Um, uh, nice to be here with you. Uh, yeah, so what do you want to hear about first? Um, All right, Paul, uh, firstly, how did you end up in PNG? Okay, my father went up to the Solomon Islands in sh the Shortlands, uh, just across the um, uh, just across the straits from uh, Bougainville, within sight of Bougainville, and uh, he went up there to visit his half brother when he was 14 years old, okay. and in 1915. So he was born in 1901, and uh, at that time his half brother was managing a plantation or owned a plantation in the Shortland Islands and he uh, went to um, Sydney for six weeks for a holiday and the six weeks turned into six months so my father was a very short man and at 14 years old he probably was very very short and he had to manage this plantation by himself. In Bougainville? Yes, that's, oh no, in Shortland Islands. Okay. So um, after World War I um, my father went to Bougainville, he became a recruiter first so he was just sailing around the, um, the islands between Bougainville, uh, the Solomon Islands and uh, Bougainville and recruiting labour. Then he, from about 1930s I think, he managed uh, the plantation in Bougainville called Enos okay. Plantation near Wackenai and um, he managed that for about 40 years but uh, in World War II he fought against the Japanese, he was a coast watcher Okay. and uh, in fact probably one of the most prominent coast watchers there were and uh, was uh, famous uh, in the area and in PNG. What was his um, name? Uh, Paul Mason, he was the oh, same. Paul Mason Senior. Paul Mason Senior. Senior. Yeah. So he, um, he was well known by the local people, he, uh, the local people, some people fought for the Japanese, he had a lot of friends that helped him though and uh, he rewarded those friends by giving them good jobs after the war and um, he depended on his his life for, for them, and there were actually uh, one Bougainvillian who um, who uh, gave his life for my father. The Japanese said, "Where's Paul Mason?" And uh, he said, "I can't tell you." So they cut off his head. So he's uh, got a got a uh, monument for him in uh, Kieta, Kieta town, and um, I hope it's still there. But uh, uh, he was uh, both um, faithful and uh, a strong supporter of my father and gave his life for my father. So he had very, very strong friends and after the war he used to point out people that helped the Japanese and said this fellow helped the Japanese, we can go to his village, he doesn't mind us coming, no. he can't say no anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 your father, so you're father, so you Maggie Booker? Yes, so I was, originally. Uh, uh, that's right, originally. So I did correspondence school, the, in primary school, and then I went to boarding school in Sydney. My parents were originally from Sydney. My okay. mother married my father after the w World War II. Okay. And, uh, but my father, uh, very early in the 1950s, as soon as he could, uh, employed uh, people from the Highlands, but particularly from Simbu. Okay, so that's and where the connection is with you and Simbu. That's right. And uh, um, I think that's probably why he was also given some quite prime real estate back then um, when he applied. Uh, one of them being Lot 1, Section 1, town of Kundiao, which is uh, ch where Chimba Lodge was. Okay. And he owned a third of that. But they had some trade stores in Mendi, Suave, um, Kundiao and uh, Kerouagi. Okay. Uh, they were only like hobbies because th they lived in Bougainville and uh, they sent um, uh, Bougainville people to come and work there. Yep. And, um, uh, my father, so I went up there, but the very first time I went to Chimbu or the Highlands was actually when I was four years old and I can just remember the trip, um, little bits of the trip. We, we drove there in a combi van mm -hmm. all the way from Leigh to Nondigal and I can remember crossing the Chimbu River and uh, 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 
kids swimming in the, in the river um, and uh, we started to float. But we were, we were being towed by a land cruiser, a land rover. Yeah. And uh, so we got across okay, but uh, being a little boy, I was uh, quite frightened then when we started <laughs> to float down the Timber River. Yeah. And uh, I mightn't be here if we uh, floated too far, I think. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, that's the first time I went to, that was 1958. Okay. And uh, then uh, I used to go to the Highlands uh, in school holidays, when I was in boarding school sometimes, uh, to help my father. Um, look after the trade stores a bit, um, sometimes with my, my mother, sometimes by myself. Uh, sometimes I'd go to Bougainville for school holidays and I'd uh, cut grass and cut copper yep. uh, with the um, line of timber uh, labourers. Yes. And um, they, uh, uh, all my, uh, early in my life I learnt uh, a great deal, a great many Chimbu swear words <laughs> before I even got to Simbu. Yes. Uh, and I think that's uh, what the first language you learned, the swear words. That's right, that's right. So um, I was flown around by, um, sometimes by uh, Sir Peter Barter, who was then just Peter Barter. He actually okay. was a pilot for Talia. Okay. And they used to call it a TAL then, or T Territory Airlines. Yeah. And, um, but when my, uh, had just finished school, grade 12, uh, Went straight to Kundiawa in November and in 1972 and that December my father died uh, of a major heart attack um, and he was he'd been still working up to then and so I took over the trade stores and built them up. The business was so slow I think that first year maybe 1973 that I think our takings in our main store for the whole day was $27, mm. which at that time they were using dollars before independence. Mm. Um, and uh, so I um, used to live with the storekeepers and I would, um, uh, I would uh, have a, my first meal would be a tin fish and a, a small little tin fish and a um, scone for lunch. Mm -hmm. And then at night I would have a tin fish and um, say cabbage or something with the, uh, and rice with rice. the, with the storekeepers. Mm -hmm. And um, well, there was only one storekeeper in each store yep. at that time. And uh, I slowly built the business up. Um, the, those stores were then later on sold to Kuri Arambo. Okay. And uh, how, how long did it take to build the, is it Sika? Sika, yes. yes. Well, first of all, it used to be called Booker Stores mm -hmm. after the, um, the fact that it was uh, from Bougainville and yeah. the storekeepers were, were Bougainville people. Um, we only owned one third of Chimbu Lodge. Um, I actually bought out the other two thirds later on from the, it passed hands a couple of times, but I, I finally bought it from, um, I think it was Kumbung Holdings, okay. Kumbung Holdings from um, uh, the Lutheran Church. Okay. Right, and a fellow named Peter Spencer. Um, so I took, took over and um, I eventually sold that because I was not, uh, we didn't have tourism coming, tourists coming to PNG anymore. Before yeah. that, it was a lot of tourists and it was so quite fun. So the heydays were in the 80s, I remember. As a mm. small kid, I remember. Yes, 70s and 80s. And um, then we had um, very popular discos. We used to run some very popular yes. discos and that would attract people. Even uh, people would come to from Moresby yep. for the weekend. To go to? To go to Chimbo Lodge. So Chimbo yeah. Lodge was like the mm. La Mana of uh, the Highlands. Mm. Everyone came to Chimbo Lodge in the 80s. I remember as a small child, my mom and dad would say, okay, you blah cool, kaya salaus, you blah all the symbol lodge. It was like the only party, the only thing that was happening. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so it proved very popular, um, but um, I eventually uh, was disappointed with the lack of tourism to the country, yeah. and I thought I couldn't change the, change the, um, you know, the, the in tourism yeah. in, industry yeah. all by myself. And so I sold, sold Timber Lodge, which I do regret now, but I sold it anyway, um, to, uh, some Chinese people who were involved in business with the Embarcio Cook. Yeah. Um, then I concentrated, I bought out uh, the steamships store. I sold my um, store in Mendy because I used to have to go out there by motorbike. Yeah, it's a long way. And it's a long way to control. I uh, sold the place in Suave because it was too small. I kept the place in Kerawagi for a bit, lo a bit longer. We had bakeries as well. Yeah. So the first bakeries in uh, Kundiao were owned by, by us, um, and uh, 
Then I concentrated on the supermarket and uh, established wholesale business. Then established um, Seeker Fire Protection. And okay. sorry, we changed the name from Booker Stores to Seeker uh, to uh, recognize uh, both where we lived and where I lived and where I was, uh, the society I was part of and the place I was part of, Simbu, and, uh, but uh, took the last two letters of um, Booker and took the first two letters of Simbu, making it Seeker. Okay. S I K A. What is K A? Oh, From Booker. Booker, yeah. Booker. Okay, okay. So the, f the first two letters of Simbu, the last two letters of Booker, and uh, I could have called it Simbuka, but it sounded yeah. a little bit like a Simbu swear word, so I thought yeah. I'll forget that. <laughs> uh, Simbu, Sika would be better. Yeah, Sika, okay. Uh, I, I used to think it meant Simbu, uh, Simbu Kundiawa, but mm. now you told me it's, it's actually Simbu Buka. Yeah. yeah. So there you are, that's the, that's the, uh, the, the, the name. And we started, I started Sika Fire as well. I, uh, protection, yeah. Sika Fire Protection, and um, uh, so that spread out. Um, through the country. Yeah, it's still there, I think. Uh, yes, and it's still, I, I sold that um, when I sold the um, Seeker, Seeker, Limit, Seeker in Kundiawa, and uh, when I moved uh, to Australia, uh, my children were, girls were two and four, and um, I thought this would be a better place to bring them up. Yep. Um, at that time, the economy wasn't very good. If it was I, in the 90s, I think? Yeah, 90s, and yeah. Uh, the oil price was about $20. Chevron had just pulled yeah. out. Um, but if I'd waited a bit longer, I could have uh, held on and um, expanded the business and been, been able to afford to fly and fly out myself yeah. and uh, keep the family here. But um, yeah. that's uh, water under the bridge, that's what I did. And yeah. um, uh, so here I am now in well, Brisbane, but uh, I've been working in PNG on and off since anyway. Yeah. I've, I've, in the 80s growing up, we've always heard about your name and uh, thinking that you were an old man, but you're still a young man. <laughs> well, I've got uh, more to contribute, I hope, and yeah. um, more I can do for the place. And, uh, you know, I certainly uh, haven't forgotten about it. In fact, um, you know, I'm going to work up there again this year uh, in PNG, and um, uh, I'd love to um, uh, help uh, where I can in some way of uh, Simbu's development in particular, yep. uh, PNG in general, but particularly Simbu. And, um, um, your I, wife I, is from Simbu? Yeah, my wife's from you Simbu. Meet your yeah. wife? I met my wife in um, late uh, 80s um, and uh, we've been together ever since. I was married before to an Australian lady uh, who we've since divorced, um, but um, we have one, I have one child from that marriage and uh, I have two from this marriage. My mid middle daughter is uh, adopted, but um, she's you know, Your that's daughter. that's irrelevant. She's yeah. my daughter, um, and uh, it's only relevant in if you see what she looks like. You yes. know, but um, <laughs> um, but that's all. So um, yeah, so here we are now today.